The genocide in Guatemala started in 1960. However, the violence peaked in 1982 to 1983 when a systematic campaign of genocide against the Mayan people was launched. While the Guatemalan Civil War was underway, the Guatemalan genocide had begun. The Guatemalan government, using the Guatemalan army and its counterinsurgency force, who defined themselves as killing machines, began a systematic campaign of repressions and suppression against the Mayan Indians, whom they claimed were working towards a communist coup. Indigenous communities, labor leaders, students, clergy, and other civilians were targeted under the theory that they formed a subversive internal enemy. The indigenous peoples were targeted and therefore made up 150,000 deaths of the total 200,000. The state justified the extermination of over 440 Mayan communities by claiming that they are part of a communist plot against the government. A UN-sponsored report stated that the army saw the Mayan communities as natural allies of the guerrillas. Their supposed alliance contributed to the severe human rights violations that were committed against them. Communities were rounded up or seized. The villagers were then brutally murdered, but if they somehow escaped, they became hunted refugees. Other bystanders were either forced to watch or sometimes they had to take part. Buildings were vandalized and demolished. The scorched earth policy was also in place, where the killers destroyed crops, slaughtered livestock, fouled water supplies, and violated sacred places and cultural symbols. Children were beaten against walls, thrown alive into pits where adults' bodies were later thrown, tortured, and raped. Victims had their limbs amputated or impaled and left to die slowly. People were doused in petrol and lit on fire, and if this didn't kill them, they were disemboweled while still alive. Pregnant women were cut open, and other women were routinely raped while being tortured. The series of atrocities committed between the two years is sometimes called the Silent Holocaust. Military units called commandos who planned executions and forced disappearances carried out covert operations. Death squads were made up of criminals and they terrorized the country and contributed to the strategy of psychological warfare and intimidation. Human rights violations were recorded and of these severe offenses, the state and army were responsible for 93% and the guerrillas for 3%. It is obvious, according to these statistics, that the guerrillas weren't the major threat to the citizens. During the genocide, the USA provided arms and equipment for the Guatemalan government. The infamous guerrilla training school, also known as the School of the Americas in Georgia, USA, continued to train Guatemalan officers whom were notorious for human rights abuses. The CIA worked with Guatemalan intelligence officers and some were even on payroll regardless of the known human rights violations that they committed against the people of Guatemala. In 1986, as a result of the genocide, a civilian rule and a new constitution were set up. However, the army held on to their own power. Peace talks were also set up by the UN in 1992. Unfortunately, it made little progress as it was suspended in 1994. The government and URGN signed an accord on human rights protection. Finally, a peace agreement was signed in 1996. A policy of reconciliation was introduced and maintained. Part of the peace agreement included the Historical Classification Commission, CEH, along with a, an investigation into the atrocities of the Civil War. A total of 9,000 witness statements were collected and kept confidential by the UN. A report entitled Guatemala, Memory of Silence was presented in February 1999, which revealed a governmental policy of genocide. The genocide was recognized as a hostile institutional structure. The policy outlined recommendations. The memory of the victims should be preserved, there should be compensation, and the democratic process should be strengthened. In April 1988, the Catholic Church's Recuperation of Historical Memory, also called Never Again, had been published, which placed the responsibility solely on the army. Then in June of 2001, a former head of military intelligence who happened to have graduated from the School of Americas and two other officers were sentenced to 30 years in prison for the murder of Bishop Juan Girardi, who presented the report. 
In June 2001, a legal action on behalf of 12 victimized Mayan communities succeeded in bringing a charge of genocide against the former dictator who had seized power in 1982. In November 1998, three former members of a civil patrol were found guilty and sentenced to death because of their heinous acts during the genocide. During the genocide, the hands of these patrollers and 42 others had massacred 77 women and 107 children. However, many others have not been tried, and these men who brutalized and killed the Mayan Indians live in the same neighborhood as the Mayan Indians themselves.